I am here with my gynecologist, and um, I, I bet I've sent I sent her thousands and thousands of patients because when women don't understand what's happening to their bodies when they uh, have you know lose their hormones, and if they live in the LA area, I go 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 to Dr. Pruden's Hall. So if you've lost your desire to have sex, you got to stay and watch this show. I want to introduce you to my friend, mm. Dr. Prudence Hall. How are you? I am great. Just delighted to be here. I did a Facebook mm. poll before I started the show um, with a lot of different topics. Uh, what are you most interesting in, in learning and hearing mm. about? Hormones, hormones, hormones. It was mm. always at the top. Toxins were there, you know, cancer was there, all the, but hormones. Mm. It's such a complex time of life. So. When a woman comes into you and she has all the seven dwarves of menopause, itchy, mm. bitchy, sleepy, sweaty, <laughs> bloated, forgetful, and all my favorite, up. all dried up, <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> Help! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I say, first of all, bless you. We're going to take you through this. This is a terrible, amazing um, transition. Right. I mean, I use both those words together because as terrible and fearful and awful as it is it's a it's a journey that opens us up to such great potential and such a newness new life women lose their hormones and they lose their sexual desire mm -hmm. they lose their <laughs> sense of who they are yeah. um, but you can get it back and that's what you and I have mm -hmm. talked about in so many of my books tell them what the first thing that you would do to a woman who's just zeroed out. Yeah. So first of all, women can get themselves back. Mm -hmm. And that loss of self is the thing that causes the most suffering. So, I mean, first of all, it's encouragement because I've done this with thousands of patients for 30 years with bioidentical hormones. So with a woman in menopause, the most critical hormone is her estrogen. Mm -hmm. Menopause is very low to non-existent estrogen. So the first thing I do is I measure all the hormones, estrogen being one of the primary through ones. Through blood tests? Through blood tests. Yeah, through blood tests primarily on the first visit, then mm -hmm. later with 24-hour urines. Yes. And we replace the estrogen with, with a bioidentical estrogen. Explain bioidentical. Okay, so bioidentical hormones are exactly the same hormones that we're making in our body. There's no difference if I were to put one hormone, the bioidentical hormone, in a little Petri dish, analyze every aspect of it, and then our own hormone in another dish, there's no difference. But, no difference. Um, women are so afraid of cancer. Mm. Um, explain that myth and, and debunk it for them. Yeah. So please, please, if any message gets out, the message I want to put out into the world is that hormones are really good for us. They, they make our heartbeat, they, they make our mind strong, they bring our libido back in our skin and, and everything about us comes back with hormones. It's like, it's like water to a plant. How could water be bad for a plant? So hormones and look how do, the plant looks without water. Yeah, dried up. Right, Itchy there you leaves, go. Scratchy <laughs> leaves. So hormones do not cause cancer. Estrogen does not cause breast cancer. It, how, it did just, that, how did that, that <laughs> myth begin? Well, it's not a myth when we talk about the synthetic hormones. Okay. So that's a very old study, 2001, the Women's Health, Health Initiative, showed that there was a substantial increase in breast cancer with women who took those type of hormones. Because it's made from? It, it's made from horse's urine. Right. And it's not a bioidentical hormone. It has 35 different hormones in it. And Are any of those horse hormones <laughs> compatible to a woman's hormones? Not really. No, so really not. So women have been taking yeah. what a horse would feel real good on all these years. <laughs> I would think women feel so betrayed that they, you mm -hmm. know, because yeah. even the horse hormones can make you feel a little better. A little Although better. I notice everybody gets kind of fat on them. Yeah, not that much better, a little better. That's yeah. why I stopped using them about 25 years ago. Yeah. Well, in yeah. the beginning, that's all they had, right? Yeah. So we, I mean, I bring compassion to this field. It was all we had and women were in a very, very bad state. It made them feel a little bit better, but it didn't correct the underlying problems. So the bioidentical estrogen prevents 50% of dementia deaths in women. Mm. I mean, this is, this is good data, 50% of dementia deaths, 75% of heart attack and stroke death. And that's what we die of, Suzanne. Yes, you know, right. Eight times more women will die of a heart attack than, than, than we do of, of breast cancer. And there's no increased risk of breast cancer with bioidentical hormones. I, mm. I honor you mm. because you are, classically trained, you have not only stepped out of the box, you've expanded the box. So uh, it was a risky, not risky, it was a gutsy thing to do to start prescribing bioidentical hormones. You're one of the first. The bioidentical hormones explain 
or you tell me, would they be uh, more prone to getting cancer not being on hormones, natural hormones? Okay, so when we lose our estrogen, certain things happen in the body. The body gets inflamed. We get very stressed. It's an internal stress. Uh, our cholesterol goes up. Our blood sugar goes up. And those are the things that cause cancer in women. So when a woman comes in, I take care of lots of women who have had breast cancer that I recommend estrogen to, you know, mm -hmm. the bioidentical estrogen to. Me being one of them. Yeah, you being one of them. And the studies are now showing, there, there are hundreds of studies now showing that when women have estrogen positive breast cancer, there's about a 20% decreased recurrence rate when women take estrogen as opposed to not taking it. And, and, and I'm one of them. I'm, yeah. you know, I'm so far away from it that I don't yeah. even think of it as a risk of mm -hmm. recurrence anymore. It, when a woman is estrogen dominant, because a lot of women are told that, um, what does that actually mean? It doesn't mean they have too much estrogen. It, it's a balance between estrogen and progesterone, right. and primarily that's seen in perimenopause. Mm -hmm. So in perimenopause, we stop ovulating, or our ovulations become less, and our estrogen levels, you know, in perimenopause, our estrogen levels are quite decreased, but progesterone could be decreased a little bit more. I found perimenopause, uh, that was my bitchiest time. So oh. I was surging. One day oh. my estrogen's really high, and one day it's really yeah. low, and yeah. one day, you know, m my husband irritates me, and the next day he's really cool. Yeah. I, I think it's a, a, a dangerous time for women, isn't it, in terms of uh, getting breast cancer? Yes. So when the hormones are flipping all over the map, right. it's a dangerous time because all of those risk factors go up. Women, I mean, we deal with stress every day, mm -hmm. you know, as it is, but mm -hmm. when our hormones are low, all of our stress hormones become very elevated, and that stressed, high sugar, high inflammation, I mean, it's a really dangerous time. I love to see women in their late 30s, early 40s at the latest. I mean, that's a perfect time to begin to get baselines. Should they, as, as they do comparative blood testing from year to year, when it starts dipping, that's when? Is that when you fill mm -hmm. the tank? Well, I, lo I look at women. I look at how they're doing in terms of their body composition, mm -hmm. how their bones are doing, what's their cholesterol doing, how do they feel, how's their memory, what's their sex drive like. And so it's not just looking at a number. It's really looking at the whole patient. And then the number, you know, the, the, the blood value, the right. patient, right. we put it all together. And it's so common that women need some hormones in their early 40s or late 30s. Very common. You've got a <laughs> bombshell for me. Um, there's a hormone, right? And mm -hmm. what is it called? It's called oxytocin. 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 Where does oxytocin come from? Oxytocin comes from the brain, from the, pitu the pituitary gland. Is this the, what we make when we're nursing a baby? That's right. <laughs> Hormones tell the cells what to do. You know, every, uh, the reason why we make skin cells and we can see and our heart is beating is due to hormones. So oxytocin helps the woman to deliver the baby. It helps her to let down with the milk. But it has a lot more you know, benefits than just what? that. Well, it connects us. It makes us feel loving, open-hearted. Uh, it decreases inflammation in the body, okay? So it's considered a love hormone, a social hormone. It increases, it increases ejaculate in men, which gives them more pleasure. It increases orgasms. It lowers blood pressure. So it's, you, it's amazing. If hormone. you take oxytocin, mm -hmm. you have stronger orgasms yes. as a female, and men get stronger erections and increase yes. blood flow? Mm -hmm. There's less anxiety. Just like HGH lowers anxiety, oxytocin really lowers anxiety. I have to say, every day is a good one for me. Yeah. The greatest thing I have ever done for myself ever is to go on hormones. And you gave me mm. the confidence to take hormones after having breast cancer. And it's been so many years that um, I, I believe in you. Mm -hmm. you have a, she has an incredible center. It's the Hall Center. And it's so set up for women and serenity. And I am so happy that you've just mm. joined the advisory board of foreverhealth.com. Mm. Uh, she will be one of the, the doctors who trains other doctors who want to specialize in bioidentical hormones. So if you live somewhere else in the country and you want this kind of medicine, which is so incredible, and I so encourage it, Go to foreverhealth.com and they will direct you to a doctor nearest you who is vetted and qualified and taught by incredible doctors like Dr. <laughs> Hall. Thank you so much for coming. Thank, Thank you for you. being such a, a, an incredible doctor yeah. and you are a gift to women and men. Thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Summers. <laughs> I love you. I love you. We'll too. be back. <laughs>